Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Calabucas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking AI, startups, and the future. Not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, if you're interested in my new philosophy of ataraxia, just pick up my book, Beyond Stoicism. Link is in the show notes below. It's be, I mean, many of you are fans of Stoicism and you've read a lot about Stoicism. This combines Stoicism with Epicureanism to create a new state of calm called ataraxia. And it's something I've been doing my entire life. And I only just realized it when I started looking into it and what it was all about. And I realized there was a lot of missing information of ataraxia and how you could get to ataraxia. So I'm going to start talking about that as well because I'm also a philosopher. Sure, there's AI startups in the future, but like I said, we don't necessarily talk about those and not necessarily in that order. So today, let's talk a little bit about food. Mm, mm, mm. Who doesn't love food? Damn it, we all love food, don't we? In fact, we love it a little too much. At least I do. At least I do. So recently, there have been... <laughs> there's been some controversy around generative AI creating recipes. And I can understand that because I watch Futurama. And early, early on in Futurama, there was a running joke. And if you're familiar with Futurama, there was a bunch of characters, and one of the characters was a robot. His name was Bender, who was made in Mexico. And one of his biggest aspirations, one of his number one aspirations, was to become a chef. And you think to yourself, well, yeah, that sounds great. Robot wants to be a chef. That is fantastic. Only problem with that, no sense of taste, no sense of smell. They may be able to see, and they may be able to, t t to touch, to feel and to hear, but they have no sense of taste. So despite the fact that Bender had no sense of taste, he really wanted to be a chef. So Futurama revolves around the crew of the Planet Express, which is a ship that does courier delivery services throughout the galaxy. So because Bender really, really, really wanted to be a chef, then the professor who runs the, runs the operation said, okay, Bender, let's try you out as a chef. So they tried him out as a chef, and he puts the meal in front of the crew, and they're gagging, they're dying. It's so salty. They can't imagine. They, they, they could not possibly eat this. It's the worst thing ever that they've ever tasted in their entire life. And of course, it's because Bender's a robot. He has no taste buds. He doesn't know what things taste like or smell like. So... Why don't we learn from that lesson? I mean, we should all learn from Futurama. Futurama is one of the best shows ever for people who are interested in the future because I think that the writers were originally co either consulted futurists or had futurists on staff because they've come up with super accurate predictions of where things are going. Now, I've said many, many times, everything will happen, the only question is when. So when you look at everything that's postulated by science fiction authors, especially hard science fiction authors and the people on Futurama, they postulate specific things. And sometimes they're, they seem really far out there because this is supposedly set in the year 3000. But the reality is a lot of that stuff is happening today because we don't know when it's going to happen. Like, for example, there was one episode where they were talking about the future of automobiles and the professor was riding around this super dangerous F1 type car and Leela was like, oh, no, 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 I want a safe car. So her car looked like a cube. It was basically a van with no wheels and no windows because windows, everyone knows that in windows break and it might hurt people. So it, the inside was almost like a, a, a rubber room. It was like rubberized room and the screens on the inside so there was no actual windows. The super, super safe car. And that's where we're going because cars are getting smaller. The window space on cars is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, especially at the back. And eventually we're going to get to the point where we don't actually have windows on a car. We just have screens to the outside world keeping us in this safe, safe, safe space. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, recently there's been some controversy around a generative AI, AI, uh, AI bot, which was creating recipes for, I think it was a New Zealand um, supermarket chain. And it was creating recipes for like a poison sandwich. It's like taking these, these horrible ingredients and putting them together to create something that if you had made it, 
you'd be creating poisonous gases in your kitchen. It would be awful. So I go back to the Bender Futurama rule. You should never let AI create recipes for you because it doesn't really know what goes with what. Now, I'm sure if you had a purpose-built recipe bot which knew what went with what, then maybe you might be able to get something that's completely usable. But right now, for this very moment, I don't think we should be trusting generative AI with creating recipes. And it's kind of like what I was saying before about success literature and recipe books. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever done this, but you ever gone to the bookstore and looked at these amazing recipe books? I mean, there's some recipe books that are absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The photography is amazing. And you look at it and you go, wow, I really want to try this. So you see the recipe on the page beside this beautiful photo. And you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to try this recipe. And th I've, this has happened to me more than once, so I'm going to tell you. I've tried the recipe. It's a beautiful picture. Tried the recipe. The recipe was as a disaster. I followed it to the letter. It was wrong. The recipe was wrong. And I thought to myself, well, why is that? And then I realized that these recipe books are in the same kind of category as success literature in that they look really great and I think people and they, they I think they target them to people who want to buy them for the pictures and not to actually do make any of the recipes in the actual book I would per I would better trust a book with no pictures and just recipes than a book with beautiful pictures and recipes that have not been tried that are wrong I've seen this before on websites where people would put up a, a recipe and you know how recipe sites are. They're terrible. They're full of ads. And it's very, if you can vary the way you're bottom, always do this. This is a little tip. If you ever want to build a recipe or make something from a recipe site, always look in the comments. Because nine times out of ten, something's wrong in the recipe. And somebody in the comments has tried the recipe and said, no, no, no. you got to put double this or half of that or do this or do that because there's something wrong in the recipe. And half the time, I think that the reason, like, even though the recipe looks really interesting, nobody is expected to make this thing. They're just expected to look at the picture and go, hmm, that's good. This is an aspirational recipe. It's not a recipe that's, that's designed to be made. And similar with success literature. When you see people like Anthony Robbins and all of these other success gurus talking about how great it is and and when you go on on x and you see people talking about how 18 year olds are making forty thousand dollars a month using these tools they aren't really they're looking it through they might have you know this absolute blueprint to do this specific thing but the blueprint was never designed to help people in the end it was only designed for the original blueprint owner to make money they're just there to sell books they don't care and they in fact they don't expect you to take their blueprint and implement their blueprint come on it's just like these recipes that are created by ai they don't expect you to actually implement it so that might be the joke on them is that we are interested in implementing we need things that are realistic and tried and true you know i can read so all sorts of aspirational stuff on the internet day after day after day but unless you give me something that actually works that's tried and true that's proven then I don't know if I'm interested anymore and that's the problem with the internet is it is too full of this type of BS which may or may not be true may or may not be real so if you ask me we really need some way to separate the wheat from the chaff some way to separate the truth from the reality some way to separate the actual tactics that work from the actual tactics that are, are there for window dressing. Anyways, so that's it for me for today. I'm going on a little bit of a hiatus, so you're not going to see extras for a few weeks, but I'll be back mid-September. In the meantime, enjoy the 800 plus episodes of the Think Future podcast that are already in the queue. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.